enemy. Amen. He, he has redeemed me from the hand of the enemy, Tim. He, he redeemed me and said, you know what? Even though your past is like this and you've done this, 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 guess what? I don't remember any of it. Marcus has said it a hundred times. You don't have a past anymore. You accept Christ in your life. You allow Christ to come in. You, you allow the blood of Jesus to cleanse you. You don't have a past anymore. You only have a future. Amen. You only have a future. He's redeemed us from the hand of the enemy. Why would we not want to tell people that there's a way? Why would we not want to tell people that, that you can come out of that? Why would we not? Why would we be ashamed if we, we, we say we love Jesus? And like I say, folks, it's easy to come into the house of God and it's easy to raise our hands. It's easy to worship God in the building. But it's when we walk out that door or that door is where the rubber meets the road. Amen. Where, where your relationship with God, where the fellowship that you have with God is really going to mean something really comes into play. Are you really strong? Or are you really weak? And it's not a knock on anybody that's really weak, but hey, I'm here to teach you and encourage you and lift you up and, and let you know that, hey, we can get stronger. We need to be stronger in this hour that we live because, listen, it, it's hard. It's just so much oppression. Halloween's coming up, man, one of the worst. Uh, Mother Marcus gave me a book one time, uh, you know, about Halloween. And I read that book. I've still got that book. Man, I don't, I don't see how anybody... I mean, that, that, Satan worshipers, I've, I've seen their testimonies that have been delivered out of Satanism and say, man, uh, that's the one holiday that the devil don't mind you. They, they, he, want, they, he wants you to let them celebrate. Halloween is... Man, it's a wicked, wicked thing. It, it, it's a celebration of evil. Not of life. There, you can church it up all you want to, but the bottom line is it's based and rooted in evil. Period. End the story. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You know what kind of flack I get from people about that? Oh, I get flack. I can't believe you won't let your kids dress up for Halloween. Hey, listen, you do what you want to do, I'm going to do what I want to do. I said, I'm not, I'm not having no part of that wicked stuff. I'm, I'm good, man. I'm good. So you do you, I'll do me. That's it. If, you, I mean, if it's not your conviction, whatever. Don't, don't come in here and try. Dude, I get hounded about that all the time. I mean, just, just mocked by it. Just, just walk by. Oh, yeah, the favorite holiday of the year, Halloween. Here it comes. I hear it all the time. <laughs> and I just, and, and the Lord on the inside of me just laughs. He just chuckles. <laughs> he says, because they're ignorant and they don't understand. I pray for those people. I, I pray that God would open their eyes to see what's going on. Amen. Don't, don't be, don't be, you know, don't be, have your head in the sand. Not in this damn time. You better not have your head in the sand. You better be wide awake. You, know, you better not be playing ostrich. Walking around with your head in the sand. You better be wide awake, vigilant, watching. The devil has a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. And gathered them out of, the, out of the lands from the east, from the west, from the north, and from the south. They wandered in a wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. And then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. And He delivered them out of their distresses. That was my life at one time. I was in trouble. I was wandering, amen, in a, in a desert place. Had no city to dwell in. I was just, I, 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 I was more like a, I, I guess like a tumbleweed in my life. That's, that's the only way I know how to put it. You ever seen a tumbleweed, Lester? They, they'll come, the wind blows, and it, it just blows them all over the place. They'll be over here one minute, then they'll be down here the next minute, then they'll be back over here the next. That was me in my life.
He said they wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in, hungry and thirsty. Their souls fainted in them. Then I cried unto the Lord in my trouble. And he delivered me out of my distresses. I like to change those words around to that. Because that's, that's me. Tonight we don't have to worry about anything. We've been redeemed from the hand of the enemy. We've been delivered out, Brother Tim. We, we're, not that, we're not there anymore, amen? No matter what people say, no matter what people do, uh, they can't take God away from us. If you've got Him in here on the inside, they can't take Him away. They, they can cut me open and take my heart out and they still can't get to Jesus, amen? They, they, can, they can knock my brains out with a ball bat and still can't get to Jesus, amen, on the inside of me. I love the Lord tonight. I know what God has done for me. I know where He's take. I, I, I know what where, he, where where I've been. I know what I've been through. I know that that God has delivered me from the hand of the enemy tonight. And I've got something to be excited about, brother Bill. I, I'm like you. That that soul on fire. That that person that's wondering, man. That soul that rekindled on the inside. That that, that all of a sudden you begin to smell smoke. Uh oh. Because what's that old saying? Where there's smoke, there's what? There's fire. Amen. I like it when the when the devil when I I, I you know I come walking up the road and I can see people going, "Whoa, we better go somewhere." Because they smell the smoke. The fire ain't got there yet. They can smell the smoke. No, about you, but that's that's how I want my life to be. I want people to know that I'm coming. I want the devil to know that I'm coming. Amen. Take a scripture here out of the third epistle of John. It's a very prophetic scripture to me and the way that God has spoken it to me. Beloved, it says in verse 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. Even as your soul prospers. If you don't never feed your soul, you don't never feed that, you don't never feed the, that inner man. Amen. You don't ever feed that inner. Uh, people wonder why they don't prosper in their life. Bill, it's His will that we prosper and be healthy. Even as our soul prospers, is a stipulation. There's a stipulation, there's a catch. That people miss. They just want to do the prosper and being health part. They don't want to hold up their end of the bargain. He says, even as your soul prospers. The most important part is that our soul is healthy. If our soul is healthy and our soul is prospering, guess what? Our physical is going to prosper and be healthy. I, I think that back to the things that like I was telling you about the blessings that God has bestowed upon me man uh, God said just look around I wish that I would that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers tonight we need to work on our inner man tonight we need to begin to feed our inner man again begin to Begin to hunger and thirst for the things of God. And begin to draw closer to God in our walk and not be so standoffish from God. I used to be standoffish from God. I, I was like, okay, this is close enough. I don't, I don't want to get too close. Just like Bill was talking about, those people say, you know, I want this much of God and that's enough. I used to be standoffish, Tim, to... With God, I, I could get in, in the presence of God, but I didn't want to get real close to God. Because He might require something of me. I might have to swallow my pride. I might have to do something. But I began to understand and begin to learn that the more I fed my spirit, man, and the more that He began to prosper, the closer that I was able to get to God without being so standoffish. And the next thing you know, that I don't have a problem anymore. 
Because why? Because I've learned that, that God is the only thing. Amen. That God is the only way that we're going to make it. God is the only thing that's going to keep us in this time that we live. Because I'm telling you, all you got to do is turn the news on and there are people that are ready to rip the United States apart at the seams. They're ready just to just to blow their top. There, they are for, there are mobs that are forming every day. Scratching on the courthouse door, clawing at the, at the Supreme Court door the other day with anger and hatred. That's the daytime that we live. And He said that He would that our soul prosper. That we would prosper and be in hell even as our soul prospers. Right. Amen. So we begin to feed our spirit man more and more because, listen, this, they can kill this. They can't kill this. Amen. They, they can't kill the spirit man. Amen. On the inside. But the spirit man got to be strong. Amen. We, we've got to be able to stand up. Amen. In the face of the devil. In the face of the enemy. And, and we have to open our mouth and let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. Amen. Because he's redeemed us for a time such as this. Amen. For the church to be able to stand and not cower down to the devil. Amen. I, I, I see... Uh, you know, I, I have to watch sometimes. I, I see them people uh, trying to get out in the middle of traffic, and I'm like, boy, that's just the craziest thing. Huh? That Ford, I just, woo, woo, and they'd be gone. Just just, just done. Why, why would you take that chance? But I have to remember that they don't understand what I understand. They don't know what I know. They don't see like we see. I had blinders on at one time. Those blinders have been moved off my eyes and I can see. The devil, he is a manipulator. He, he likes to twist and turn and poke and prod and manipulate and push and all those things. But tonight God says that He wants your soul to prosper. He wants you to begin to stir up a new hunger for the things of God, a new thirst for the things of God. He said, whosoever drink of this water will never thirst again. Amen? He wants you to come tonight, amen, and drink. Amen, from the fountain. He wants you to come tonight and, and to feed your inner man, your, your, your spirit man. I'm going to ask you to stand tonight and God would have you to come and find a place at the altar tonight. Amen, if you would, and come and this is how he wanted to end this service. He'd been speaking to me about it. He wants you to come and find a place at this altar tonight. And he wants you to uh, cry out to him tonight. He wants you to pray and seek his face. And He wants to speak to us tonight. To our soulish, in the soulish realm tonight. If you would just come and find a place tonight. I'm going to slip back to the back and put on a little music. and Let's just take a little time and spend with God right now. Thanks for joining with us for the broadcast from New Beginning Worship Center in Greenback, Tennessee. We are located at 6501 Highway 411 South in Greenback, Tennessee, zip code 37742. Emails may be addressed to nbwcmailbox at gmail.com. Pastor Marcus Severance and the congregation invite you to join with us Sundays at 10 a.m. for teaching followed by worship services at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. We also meet midweek at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. We're located on Highway 411 in Greenback, Tennessee, just three buildings down from the intersection of Highway 95. If you can't meet with us in person, please join us again next time for our broadcast.